pirates? I mean, you want to bring this to Friday Night Smackdown? You want to bring this to my network? Lam say say Uniki. Simpstep. These videos are satiric reviews. You don't have to agree, but don't bitch about it. Hey there, I'm a social injustice warrior, Vin Fuso. And do you remember Paul Birchall? He was a pretty talented guy who spent some time in the WWE. He was paired with William Regal as two ruthless countrymen and enforcers. The pairing wasn't entirely forgettable, but they definitely fell short of the memorable mark. And of course, eventually, as things go in wrestling, the pair would split. It has come to the network's attention that the two of you no longer want to be a tag team and you'd like to go your correct. separate ways. Uh, yes. Okay. Your ancestry can be traced back to English nobility. It's certainly can. How your ancestry traces back to... Pirates! Bloody I, pirates! That's right, pirates! You mean that kind of pirates? I'm proud of my ancestors. My mother's second cousin's great, 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 great... Great grandfather was the second lieutenant, the fiercest pirate in the seven seas. To Blackbeard the pirate. Picture this. Swashbuckling on SmackDown. Michael <laughs> Albert. Can you imagine if he'd come from a long line of proctologists? Paul finding out that he apparently had some sort of ancestry to Blackbeard the pirate decided to adopt his no good great great pig stealing grandfather's lifestyle as his own. <laughs> Wait a minute. It, is that Paul Burchill? Hello. Hello. Cole, what the, is that the... beginning to call himself Pirate Paul Birchall. Subtle. And it was around this time that he also started to dress up like Jack Sparrow. I mean, come on, look at that. that that's Jack Sparrow. Someone called the people making the Pirates reboot. We may have found them a leading man. Look at yourself, okay? Do you honestly think that this is gonna work? No, second thought, I think it might work. I think you're gonna be huge, man. It's gonna be hot. We need a pirate in this business. It's gonna be over, dude. He very quickly got over in ways that he hadn't before and would never after. Pirate Paul's time with the company is probably best remembered for by his entrances, which consisted of him swimming... Swimming. He was swimming. He swam to the ring. <laughs> Pirate Paul's time with the company is probably best remembered by his entrances, which consisted of him swinging from a rope to the entrance ramp, and giving away the jewelry he wore to the ring. Which, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, seems kinda counterproductive if you're a pirate. Pirates loot and steal, they don't... they don't give things away. You related to Blackbeard or Robin Hood, Paul? And not to be that guy, but what was the point of bringing a sword to the ring if he's never gonna use it? I mean, I'm not complaining that he never stabbed a guy, but... But actually, yeah. Yeah, come to think of it, I am. Was the sword really necessary if it's just gonna be an accessory? I mean, we could tell that he was a pirate without it. I mean, just look at the guy liner on him. He was either a modern pirate, a member of Green Day, or just fabulous. I want to comment that despite the fact that holding a microphone up to Birchall wasn't doing anyone any favors, he still showed natural charisma when in the gimmick. And it was clear that he was having fun performing it. While he didn't do anything of note while in the gimmick, he did manage to capture the attention of the audience. And if he was given more time in the role, I have no doubt in my mind he would have been a known name and a made man. I mean, I'm not saying that he'd beat The Rock or become WWE Champion at any point in time, but I believe this would have gotten over in the same right that characters like Mankind got over. Except... You know, he, he, he wouldn't win the WWE Championship or, or beat The Rock. I guess I could have used better wording on that one. And did I say he didn't have any memorable moments? Because, you know what, I lied. And he actually made a career off forcing William Regal to cosplay. 247 pounds, Paul Butcher! He's a ringer! My buxom wench, Lady Regal! The most beautiful woman since Queen Elizabeth. Happy 
made some problems with those high heels. Well, look, it kind of looks like... That is a very, Mr. Burchill, ever the gentleman. <laughs> I think he had a little handful. Now look at Regal's face. Oh, come on. You know, does he have to... So that's Jesse. I'm going to write that down so I remember. Uh oh I can't wait to see what Regal's dressed as. Making his way to the oh. ring now, residing in St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. Oh, Burchill. Hey, you know, you got to hand it to Paul Burchill. He's just like that. He's also just like a cop. What the hell? Oh, fuck. And his partner, weighing in at 246 pounds, <laughs> William Regal. What the hell? And his name is Virgil's throw, but Regal's the one who made the bet in the first place to, if he lost the match, he had to dress up like this. Yep. Oh. Get closer. Regal. Oh, whoa, look at Virgil. He was going to make a tag to miss. And the victory for Jim and I, but Virgil took off. I don't get this. But that does that mean that, uh, that Best gimmick ever. During his short tenure, he would at least be accompanied to the ring by a plethora of beautiful women. And wait a second, is that Shelly Martinez? Shelly Martinez had a job in the WWE before she was the tarot card reading vampire? This is news to me. Learn something new every day. His time with the company, and more so over in this gimmick, was limited. But he lasted just long enough to get an action figure and make it into one of the SmackDown vs. Raw games. And don't ask me to remember which one. All right, You spend years of your life buying a new game every year, and at some point in time, they all just, they all just kind of blend together. I, I don't know which one is which. I, I don't care either. The gimmick was beloved by fans, but... Apparently not by officials backstage, namely Vince McMahon, who, surprise, surprise, knew nothing about Pirates of the Caribbean, which really shouldn't be surprising because when Scott Hall pitched the Razor Ramon gimmick, he labeled him a genius because he'd never seen Scarface. You know, Vince, I, I just, I, I don't think you get out very much, do you? You're not exactly a cinephile, are you? Anyway, Vince, not understanding what Paul was going for, thought he should act more like, well, Probably like Jean-Pierre Lafitte. Why haven't I made a video on that guy yet? And why did I pronounce his name wrong? Got off topic again, sorry. Vince promptly made Pirate Paul lose his gimmick. You are not a pirate. Despite the fact that it already resonated with the crowd. All because Vince didn't get it. Because he didn't get it, he thought no one else would. even though people clearly did. So Vince, of course, being the creative genius he is, took Pirate Paul off the market and said, no more pirates, you can't do it, it's not working, no one's gonna like it, we're gonna bring you back, we're gonna give you a gimmick that I understand, that people will understand, that people will like, we're gonna put you in an incestuous relationship with your uh, kayfabe sister. And that happened. And that happened, that, that was a thing that happened in wrestling. And the only reason the only reason that story was dropped and didn't last very long is because WWE went PG. Meaning that if they didn't, if they hadn't uh, changed their rating, we would have gotten a full-blown angle of Paul Burchill doing his fake sister. That's a gimmick. That's a gimmick. That's going to get somebody over. Somebody... Uh, maybe somebody in Tennessee will like that one. I don't know. Vince, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? And I want to talk more about this gimmick. Actually, no, I don't. I probably shouldn't. I don't even know legally if I can. But I'm going to save that topic for a video in the future. So uh, when you see Paul Birchall pop up on this channel again, vomit bags ready. Unless you're into that kind of thing. And hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to judge. It's, uh, I mean, it's 2019 when I'm making this. It's probably 2020 when I'm releasing this. So, uh, you know, you, you do you. But make sure you're only doing you because, you know, that stuff is frowned upon for good reason. Don't. Don't do it. St stay away from it. Better to have a pirate fetish. I just wanted to tell you that I thought about what you said, and I guess you're right. I'm not really a pirate. So with that being said, I'm the Social Injustice Warrior V Infuso, and if you like the words that came out of my mouth hole, and you too want to become a VTard, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more where this video came from. Follow me on Twitter because, hell, why not? It's not considered stalking if it's on the internet, am I right? And don't forget to join the Discord. 
I don't have anything catchy to add to that, but just, just join it. Just go, go do it. And if you have a free moment of time and a free dollar to spare, then head over to my Patreon, where for just one buck, you too could help keep this boat afloat. And if you don't have that dollar, but you do have a free moment of time, then hit the share button. It will help me out tremendously. Vitart, oh.